Hello and welcome back to No Bullshit. Today we turn to talking about yet another company trying to get woke with its messaging and advertising. Previously we've seen Nike blow it by hiring Colin Kaepernick, the washed up athlete turned woke leftist activist. That bogus SJW campaign cost Nike a lot of their stock value too. And they also lost a lot of respect in American communities as well, freaking communist losers. And now, this time, it's not sneakers that are getting woke though. This time it's the ice cream company Ben & Jerry's who, just a few days ago, announced their new flavor called Pecan Resist, designed to, of course, resist Trump for some reason. I'm not even sure these left-wing idiots know why they hate the guy anymore. And this vague advertising scheme doesn't do much explaining of things either. So first, to kick things off, let's start with the tweet Ben & Jerry sent out on their official Twitter account announcing this. It's from a few days ago, October 30th, 2018, and it says, Today we launch Pecan Resist. This flavor supports groups creating a more just and equitable nation for us all, and who are fighting President Trump's regressive agenda. Learn more and take action here. Well, I have to say, now I'm even more confused than before. I mean, I'm sure I get the basics. They're resisting Trump. Ben & Jerry's wants it to be crystal clear that they're siding with the liberals here. That's why they made a whole goddamn flavor attacking our president. But I still don't really understand why they don't like him. I mean, they haven't said it. And aside from the obvious Democrats versus Republican thing, they're really offering no sort of argument against Trump or anything he's actually done. And what's this bit about the president having a regressive agenda anyway? Seriously? You're totally using that word wrong, guys. We all know it's really the leftists who are regressives now. That's why they call these self-proclaimed progressives regressives, because that's what their ideology is really about now. Liberals want to regress us back to times before there was free speech, by advocating for deplatforming and censorship. Leftists also want to regress to more racist times like hundreds of years ago, when people were more focused on skin colors and family lineages and identity politics, as opposed to judging people based on their merit and character. And these are only a few examples of how Democrats are regressive. I don't have time for it, but believe me, I could go on all day. But I think I'm already good here because this Ben and Jerry bullshit hasn't listed one regressive thing President Trump has done. No one has really because he's not regressive at all. If anything, Trump is the actual progressive here. He's helping to progress this country into a future with more success and less racism, as opposed to what the Democrats want, which is exactly the opposite. But let's go ahead and give B&Js another chance to explain themselves today. If you click the link at the bottom of this tweet, it takes you to the Pecan Resist Flavors webpage. Here you can see their full-size woke artwork, which is seriously cringy. Looks like they're trying too hard to be minority friendly or urban or something. I don't know. And the artwork looks even more ridiculous when you look at this picture from Ben and Jerry's press conference. Three old white guys from the company looking pretty smug with themselves, all because they put brown cartoon characters on their ice cream. Relax, soy boys. You're not changing the world, you losers. You're mixing milk with sugar and chocolate and then freezing it and selling it. Get over yourselves already. It's also worth noting here that Ben and Jerry's is a company based in the small northeastern state of Vermont, which is a whopping 95% white, by the way. So, hey, maybe that's why Ben and Jerry here are so keen on putting brown people on their ice cream, because it appears they would never see these kinds of people otherwise. Regardless, let's scroll down on the website and take a look at an extended description about this new flavor. It reads, Together Pecan Resist. I guess it's supposed to be like, we can resist. Alongside all those nutty chunks, this pint packs a powerful message under its lid. Together we can build a more just and equitable tomorrow. We can peacefully resist the Trump administration's regressive and discriminatory policies, and build a future that values inclusivity equality, and justice for people of color, women, the LGBTQ community, refugees, and immigrants. Pecan Resist supports four organizations that are working on the front lines of the peaceful resistance. Supposedly peaceful, but what about Antifa? Building a world that supports their values. Get to know them and then find Pecan Resist here. Well, now we're getting somewhere, I guess. They are still way off base though, but I think I could see more of what's going on here. First of all, we already beat down that regressive claim, but now we got Ben and Jerry saying Trump is discriminatory in his policies too, which is also not true. I mean, Maybe you could say the president discriminates against people who are not Americans, but that's a good thing. The president of a country should prefer and defend his own people over others. That's kind of part of the job description, but I guess leftists prefer defending illegals and black and brown people from any other place but America. They prefer anyone who's not white, and they want us to not prefer ourselves too, which is completely ridiculous. I think the bottom line here is this. Ben and Jerry's has got a bad case of white guilt, brought on by them buying into regressive left-wing SJW politics. As I said before, Ben and Jerry themselves are white. Their company and state are mostly white too. So the only time they see or interact with minorities is when they put them on their ice cream boxes. In advertisements in a patronizing way, I might add. And in my opinion, this is all this company's attempt at correcting for its supposed white privilege. Ben and Jerry bought into that crock of shit and now they feel guilty about it. And that's why they're trying to sound so woke and down with the minorities. Because not only do they want it to be known that they are politically aligned with the left-wingers, Ben and Jerry want you to know they're woke and they also want to take your money too. Because at the end of the day, 
day, they actually thought this left-wing activism was the way to get more shekels and sell more ice cream. But I think they will quickly see that it's actually going to get them the opposite. SJW bullshit never sells and the companies that use it to advertise always end up worse off for it. Next, let's look at the partners on this project with Ben & Jerry's. I'm sure these will be some real winners. The first one's called Color of Change and it says, Color of Change designs campaigns powerful enough to end practices that unfairly hold black people back. They hold back blacks. And champion solutions that move everyone forward. Well, I'm willing to bet they're more focused on moving black people forward or namely pulling down white people. And the first part I'm fine with, there's nothing wrong with trying to help your people out. But I do find it funny that if a group tried to do the same thing for white people, they would get slammed and derided by people like Ben and Jerry's and other SJWs for it. Propping up and helping out black and browns is championed. But if you try and help white people out, you're a racist, bigot, white supremacist. And that's pretty hypocritical. Just saying. And as for the color of changes website that's linked here, I don't really see anything worthwhile on it. Just lots of complaining about everything being racist in America, which is not only wholly untrue, it's also a scandalous misdirection from the real problems African Americans face. If Color of Change really wanted to help black people, they would be talking about ways to fix the rampant crime and sexual promiscuity in their communities, and the horrendously high numbers of children growing up in poverty without fathers. Blaming other people for all your problems is never going to help anything. In fact, it's actually just making things worse. Next on Ben & Jerry's Virtue Signal list is Honor the Earth, which works on issues of climate change, renewable energy, and environmental justice with indigenous communities. Sounds like they're trying to tap into that oh-so-profitable, woke Native American demographic. I'm sure they're buying tons of ice cream from Vermont. Hashtag sarcasm. But really, Honor the Earth doesn't seem too bad though. It's just another woke, left-wing activist group. This one focuses on a different minority this time. Instead of blacks, it's Native Americans. And it's definitely never going to be white people. Am I right? Screw us. And nothing invokes white guilt more than talking about all the tragedies and bad shit white people did to Native Americans. Yeah, that's the angle with this one. And it only works when liberals leave out the very important and true fact that the Indians were fighting with us just as much. We warred with the Native Americans across this continent for centuries. That's hundreds of years. Back and forth fighting, blood on both sides. And now, because we, the Americans, eventually won out, the left-wingers use that to try and shame us for kicking so much ass back in the day. That kind of guilt trip isn't going to work on me, though. Following this one on the list is Nita, one of the fastest growing independent media platforms led by people of color. Because that means they're better or something. I don't know. They just like minorities a lot. Get used to it. All along the Texas-Mexico border to boot. And this one just sounds like another wannabe progressive news outlet, probably focused on the idiotic goal of having unlimited illegal immigration allowed at American southern border with Mexico. Ridiculous. As if we don't have enough problems here in America to worry about already. And I love how the Nita website has its own tab and section simply titled abortion. Funny how they're so comfortable with the word that virtually means killing babies. I also think no matter what side of that issue you're on, abortion should never be a topic taken lightly. But this really shouldn't surprise us too much since this website also features tabs on border wall, immigration, and LGBTQ. Absolutely embarrassing. And the last organization Ben and Jerry's wanted to virtue signal their support for is the now infamous Women's March, who is supposedly committed to harnessing the political power of diverse women and their communities to create transformative social change. But in reality, they're just another anti-Trump activist group, using women along with minorities to try and push their liberal and socialist communist politics. And not only is the Women's March led by that terribly racist and anti-American Linda Sarsour, but also and more notoriously, the Women's March has had leaders like Sarsour and others who openly supported Louise Farrakhan, the 85-year-old black nationalist who still goes on anti-Semitic tirades on TV to this day. Farrakhan has called the Jews termites and has even said that Hitler was a very great man. And that's only the beginning of his terrible quotes. But it shouldn't be a surprise that the Muslim activist Linda Sarsour supports an openly anti-Semitic person. I mean, she's anti-Jewish herself. Most Muslims are. And so too are a lot of liberals and Democrats nowadays too. And when Ben & Jerry's was asked about their new colleague's notorious reputation for supporting the hatred of Jews? Well, the all-white ice cream company just tried to hand wave this whole conundrum away. But I say, it's not going to be that easy. Like Nike before them, Ben & Jerry's has really blown it here. They've gone down a negative, vague, anti-Trump road that's going to come back and bite them in the cone eventually. It's like they've never heard of the Trump curse before. People should know that everyone that messes with the president goes down in flames eventually. And I don't mean an actual attack going down. More like they lose, fail, or their reputations are destroyed or ruined. But I will say this before we go. If you combine the vagueness of this Ben & Jerry's ad, along with the wording of resist, seemingly implying people should be protesting Trump or worse, well, I would say this message could be seen as a call to action, which could result in physical altercations. Think about it. The ice cream doesn't have a message of peace or for positive or good vibes. It says resist, and combine that with the ugly, angry-looking brown protesters on the artwork in, 
it's almost certainly some sort of call to action. What do you guys think? Is Ben and Jerry's getting woke? And how long do you think it will be until they eventually go broke? And was this ad a result of white guilt the company was feeling because they bought into SJW politics? Comment your thoughts on everything below and make sure you check out our new updated links below this video. We've got social media, support links, and even some playlist collections of our older great videos. Check those out and thanks again for watching today's video. We'll see you all next time.